The traditional view of human evolution suggests that modern Homo sapiens emerged from a single ancestral lineage in Africa and gradually spread across the globe. However, recent research has challenged this belief. In the largest ever DNA study of its kind in humans, researchers from the University of Cambridge have used new technology and genetic analysis of data from populations from all around the world. Their findings challenge long-held assumptions and suggest that our evolutionary history is far more complex than previously imagined. For the better part of the last two decades, the dominant narrative in human evolutionary genetics has centered around the out-of-Africa theory. This model posits that our species, Homo sapiens, originated in Africa sometime between 200,000 and 300,000 years ago. It suggested a relatively linear progression from earlier hominin species, with a single ancestral population giving rise to all modern humans. This population, according to the traditional view, eventually ventured out of Africa and replaced other hominin species like Neanderthals and Denisovans as they spread across the globe. This theory was largely supported by a lot of fossil evidence unearthed primarily in East Africa. This includes finds like those at Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania and the Hadar region of Ethiopia. These sites have yielded fossils of early hominins, such as Australopithecus afarensis, the famous Lucy, dating back millions of years, and progressively more human-like species leading up to early Homo. Furthermore, early genetic studies analyzing mitochondrial DNA that is passed down through the maternal line and Y-chromosome DNA that is passed down through the paternal line also pointed towards a recent African origin for modern humans. These studies suggested a common ancestral lineage converging in Africa within the last few hundred thousand years. However, as genetic sequencing technology advanced and allowed for the analysis of the entire genome, the picture began to grow more complex. The discovery of Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA in modern human genomes revealed that our ancestors did not simply replace these other hominin groups, but also interbred with them. The 1000 Genomes Project, launched in 2008, represented a monumental effort to create a comprehensive catalog of human genetic variation. By sequencing the genomes of thousands of individuals from diverse populations across the globe, this project provided an unprecedented dataset for studying human genetic history and evolution. It is within this database of genetic information that the latest research has revealed a deeper and more ancient layer of complexity in our ancestry. In a new study published in the journal Nature Genetics, researchers at the University of Cambridge have conducted a sophisticated analysis of full genome sequences from the 1000 Genomes Project. It is the largest ever DNA study in humans and encompasses genetic data from diverse populations across Africa, Asia, Europe, and the Americas. The team's methodology is noteworthy. Unlike many studies that rely on extracting and analyzing ancient DNA from fossil remains, this research focused on analyzing the genetic information present in contemporary human populations. They utilized the data set of the 1000 Genomes Project. To do this, the team developed a sophisticated computational algorithm called COBRA, Coalescent-Based Reconstruction of Ancestral Allele Frequencies. This algorithm is designed to model the processes of population divergence and subsequent merging. This allows researchers to test different scenarios of ancestral population history against the observed patterns of genetic variation in modern humans. They tested COBRA using simulated data to ensure its accuracy before applying it to the real human genetic data. The results of this study indicate that modern humans descended not from a single ancestral population, but from at least two distinct groups that diverged from each other approximately 1.5 million years ago. It's more like two branches sprouting from the same ancient trunk of the human family tree, each evolving independently for over a million years. These two populations, while both undoubtedly belonging to the broader human lineage, would have accumulated their own unique genetic variations over this vast time scale. Then, around 300,000 years ago, these two long-separated groups came back together, leading to a genetic fusion that ultimately gave rise to Homo sapiens. The scale of this ancient mixing wasn't some minor interbreeding event like the later encounters with Neanderthals and Denisovans. The researchers estimate that one of these ancestral populations contributed a substantial 80% to the genetic makeup of modern humans, while the other contributed the remaining 20 This is a far more significant contribution from an archaic population 
than the relatively small genetic input from Neanderthals and Denisovans, which occurred much later, around 50,000 years ago. Unlike Neanderthal DNA, which is primarily found in non-African populations, the genetic contribution from these two ancient populations is present in all modern humans regardless of their geographic origin. One of the striking findings to emerge from their analysis was the identification of a severe population bottleneck in the larger of the two ancestral populations immediately after the initial split around 1.5 million years ago. This suggests that this population experienced a dramatic reduction in size, possibly due to environmental pressures or other factors, before slowly recovering and growing over the next million years. Interestingly, this population, which contributed the majority of our genetic material, also appears to be the ancestral group from which Neanderthals and Denisovans later diverged. This suggests a dynamic early human landscape with populations fluctuating in size and splitting apart over vast timescales. The study also shed light on the nature of the genes inherited from the minority contributing population. The researchers observed that these genes were often located in regions of the genome that are less critical for gene function. This suggests a process known as purifying selection, where natural selection acts to remove harmful mutations over time. Genes from a less compatible genetic background might have accumulated more such mutations and would therefore be less likely to be retained in functionally important regions of the genome. However, in another twist, the researchers also found that some of the genes inherited from the minority population, particularly those related to brain function and neural processing, may have played a crucial role in the evolution of uniquely human cognitive abilities. This hints at the possibility that the genetic contribution from this smaller, distinct population may have provided crucial innovations that were advantageous for the emerging Homo sapiens lineage. The study raises a profound question. Who were these two distinct ancestral populations that came together to form modern humans? While the genetic analysis provides evidence of their existence, it doesn't directly identify them in the fossil record. However, the researchers point to potential candidates based on the hominin species known to have lived in Africa and possibly other regions during the relevant time period, around 1.5 million to 300,000 years ago. Species like Homo erectus, known for its early migration out of Africa and its presence across a wide geographic range, and Homo heidelbergensis, considered a potential ancestor of both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, are plausible candidates. Homo erectus lived from about 1.8 million years ago to possibly as recently as 100,000 years ago, overlapping with the time frame of the initial split. Homo heidelbergensis emerged around 600,000 years ago and is thought to have lived until about 200,000 years ago, falling within the period of reconnection. However, the researchers emphasize that more research, and crucially, more fossil and potentially ancient DNA evidence, will be needed to definitively link these genetic ancestors to specific fossil groups. The fossil record of this period is still incomplete, and new discoveries could potentially reveal other hominin species that might be better candidates for these ancestral populations. Interestingly, the researchers also applied their COBRA model to genetic data from other species, including bats, dolphins, chimpanzees, and gorillas. They found evidence of ancestral population structure in some of these species, but not all, suggesting that the kind of complex merging event observed in human history might not be unique to us, but could be a more widespread phenomenon in the evolution of other animals as well. The discovery of this hidden genetic mixing event is just the beginning. Moving forward, scientists aim to refine their models to account for more gradual gene flow between populations, rather than sharp splits and reunions. Additionally, further studies will explore how these findings align with archaeological and fossil evidence. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to our channel for more captivating stories and scientific discoveries. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with anyone who might be interested. See you next time.